In this week's Restaurant Report Card, there are no closures to report, so we wanted to shine the light on your own kitchens, mistakes that you make at home that are high-priority violations in restaurants, and they could make you sick. Melanie is outside now with this week's report. All right, guys, so we're in the Winn-Dixie kitchen. It makes sense because sometimes I feel a little hypocritical. You know, I talk about all the violations that restauranteurs are making, but then I'm like, do I do that in my own kitchen? Do I do that in my own kitchen? And sometimes I say, yes, I make those same mistakes. I have Des Jessica Tyree here with Restaurant Compliance Solutions. You're a former inspector, and now you go in and inspect restaurants for their benefit so that they can pass these formal inspections. Um, one of the things that people, and I always see these in the reports, temperature violations. And we talk about roaches a lot, and I know those are the things that make you go, uh, but the temperatures, that's what can make you sick. Right, yes. So. When we're taking temperatures, we're looking at um, every different kind of food has the, its own temperature that it has to reach. Um, so there's different bacteria associated with different types of food. So temperatures have to be reached to kill those that's bacteria. Bacteria. And that's important when we're at home, of course, and then also when we're in restaurants. So you brought your trusty thermometer. Now everyone should have one of these in their homes. I have one, it's old, and I often wonder, is it right? Like when I'm sticking it in, is it measuring right? And you said there's a simple way to test that. Sure, there's uh, the way you calibrate your thermometer is um, you take a glass of ice water, lots of ice, um, put it in, put your thermometer in the ice water. The freezing temperature of water is 32, 32 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. So I'm when you put to your that thermometer, out here today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> When you put your thermometer in, there it you go. 32 degrees. And there you know when you're testing. And, and the thing is, no one's really going to remember, but chicken, pork, fish, everything should be at a different temperature. And you can just easily go online and find those temperatures right. and make sure. And, and this is important when you're serving your family, especially when you have guests over, to consider that you want to make sure that these temperatures are correct. Absolutely, yes. And but, that your thermometer is working, working properly. properly. And we know that this one is. Can I have it? Sure. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about food storage, because this is what I see a lot. And Oftentimes, it doesn't make sense to me all the time. I know it's important, but I'm like, okay, I'm in the freezer. If chicken's stored over pork or beef is stored over chicken, like, why is that so important, even especially in the refrigerator when you could have some dripping? Right, and that's exactly why, because um, each food has a different cooking temperature, so chicken has to be cooked to 165 degrees to kill the bacteria that's on it. So if it's over top of pork, mm -hmm. pork only has to be cooked to 145. So if um, any bacteria that could be on that chicken is dripping onto that pork, that pork's not going to be cooked high enough to kill that bacteria yeah. that dripped from the chicken. And then also if you have fresh produce underneath, that's yes. not even potentially getting cooked, or if it's cooked, it's certainly not going to be at the same level as well. Right, that cross-contamination is really bad because, like you said, it's not even going to be cooked. So the best way when you're looking at your refrigerator to store your items is how? Um, so all of your ready-to-eat or cooked foods on the top shelf, then seafood, then all of your steaks, pork chops, that kind of stuff, um, ground meats, sausage, hamburger meats, and then chicken goes on the bottom. All right, easy. Yeah, we yeah. just have to do it, right? Right, do it's it. hard, especially in a home refrigerator yeah. because you don't sometimes necessarily you don't have, have all shelves. that. But usually you don't have all that meat in there at one time, so you just right. can adjust. Let's talk about hand washing because I, I've seen in the inspections, you know, the inspector will actually be watching, and some of the workers will not wash their hands when they go from raw meat to vegetables, and that, you're saying, is like a number one thing that could get someone sick. Right, and that's, um, that's the number one way that cross-contamination happens, and that's the number one way that people get sick, is people not washing their hands when they're supposed to or washing them properly, because, of course, just like everything else, there's a procedure for right. hand washing. And that's so. 20 seconds, wash your hands with soap, yeah. soap and dry them properly, and do that every time when you're crossing between different types of foods. Appreciate you joining me, Jessica, coming out here early, freezing in the Winn-Dixie kitchen. Me. Yeah, certainly a lot of information there. Go to newsforjax.com. You can find out more about what she does and also how to properly store and heat your food. Jen, back to you.